Today we're looking at a quick and streamlined structural steel modeler for parametric design aimed at being as easy to use as possible. You can model steelwork from simple lines or a parametric script and you can fully control member properties with a beam schedule. It also allows models to be streamed to other programs including Revit in real time. Okay, so we've updated Structured Steel Modeler to be a lot simpler. It's now made out of only three components. The modeler itself, a component to assemble a schedule, and a component to collect the members. It should be a lot quicker and it's a lot easier to use as well. So to demonstrate on this building here, which is just made out of simple lines, the first thing we need to do is create a schedule so it knows what size to model. You can see the T output there is empty at the moment. And to do that, I'm just going to grab some section sizes. And here we've got a selection from around the world, Australian, UK, US, EU, and some other shapes. So I'm just going to grab one of these. This is the UB one. I'm going to select a 310 UB and plug it into the section. So I can see that my schedule now has one item in it. If I wanted to, I can give it a prefix. For example, B1 for B, B number one. Plug that in there, and you can see my schedule is now B1, which is a 310 UB46. So now I just need to select some curves. So I'm going to grab these ones here, um, not that one. And simply just set multiple curves. So there you can see the model of those curves. So it's modeled everything based on this size. If I change that size, it's going to upsize everything. Now you can quickly just change the vertical alignment because at the moment that's centered. With a 0, 1 or 2, center is 0, top or bottom. Top's good. And you can see that I can also select a different schedule index, although it defaults to zero, which is my one and only item at the moment. I can put an additional amount of um, Z alignment in it. So I can put another 100 mil, say I've got a concrete deck. Now I'm going to make it minus 100 to lower the top of steel by 100. There you go, you've got the 100 mil gap there. You can also set a Y eccentricity, so if you wanted to be offset from the center line, I'll, I'll keep this minus 100 so you can see what happens. You can also put a rotation on it, so for example, I'll just put a 45 degree angle on all of these beams <laughs> which is a bit useless but um, it is useful for a number of situations which I'll show in the rest of the video but that's a 90 degree rotation etc. So now I want to start modeling the columns in as a different size so to do that, I'm going to add another size to my schedule. So to do that, I'm going to grab one of these universal column sections, drop downs, and you can just simply hold shift and add it. 
and you can see that my schedule is now B1 at 900 WB as before and item number one or the second item index number one is 250 UC 73 and I haven't bothered giving another prefix and you don't have to it's just optional so how do I add these columns in well simply copy and paste another member section in so I'm going to add these columns in so I'll just add these ones in here and I'll set multiple curves and I'm going to make this index 1 as I said before in the schedule index and so I've selected my curves I've said it's got to be the second item and I just hold down shift and add it to M and there they are there's our columns along with our beams again if I wanted to rotate them I can rotate by 90 degrees And there you go. Oh, and I want to make them centered by the way as well. Yeah, that's better. So another feature you might notice is the outputs of the modeler. At the moment, I've just simply got a red render, which is a default grasshopper output. But you've got your G, which is geometry. You've got L and T and S. So what I'm going to do is color these members up and to do that I'm going to use these components which are standard components. If you go to display in Grasshopper you can just get a custom preview which is this and this is just a swatch which is another um, standard component in Grasshopper it just allows you to select a color. So for the geometry, all you need to do is plug it into G and give it a color. So there you got everything is blue. Now the other thing is that they're grouped into your original groups that you selected them in. So that means you can color them by section uh, type or schedule item so if I just simply copy and paste this swatch and change it to a different color say I want a purple I just hold down shift and graft you have to graft because that means it groups the inputs and the inputs are grouped in so you can see now I've got purple columns and blue beams. You can also tag things in the model if you want to see that in the viewport. And again, this is a standard component. It's right there, tag 3D. And you can see the L and the T line up with the L and the T of the tag. So there it's tagged everything. Now the size is a bit big, so I'm just going to make it 0.2. And there you can see our size that we've assigned to everything is displayed in the model. Justification you can change, bottom center works pretty well. And you can actually just print that on plans. If you go if you change it to top view, you could print that out as a plan because it's um, all aligned. And the last output there is S, which stands for stream. And that's possibly the most useful output in that it allows us to stream this model directly into other programs, especially Revit, but it can be others as well. 
and I'll show that in a minute. But I'll just briefly show how quick this is to model. I'm just going to model the whole thing. So start off with selecting all the columns. But I won't select the bracing. And I've got to check that in the front view as well, just to select, deselect the bracing. I'll assign our existing column size to all of those. Next I'll add the beams, just keeping things pretty simple here. I'll add these as well. And then finally I'll do the bracing. And for this I'm going to use a different section size. So I'm just going to add a curve. Oh, you can just double click and add a curve. Set multiple curves. And then I'm going to grab one of these components again. I'm going to make it schedule index number 2. I'll just disconnect that. And I do want center for this. And I'll just add a bracing angle to the schedule. Hold down shift. So now we've got three sections and I'll just hold down shift and add these last curves. Okay there we go so we can also just color these something different. There we go. Done. Job's done. See it's pretty quick and scrolls really well in Rhino. Rhino is pretty good at displaying a lot of geometry very quickly. It's very smooth. So I'll show real-time streaming into Revit now. For that you'll need Rhino inside the plugin which you can get from McNeil who distribute Rhino. And you just load up Grasshopper and I've got my structured modeler script there and I've just got this little script that you might have seen before in one of my other videos just a very basic conceptual bridge which I can vary so it's parametric so I'll add the arch I'll add the ties And I'll add the deck curve. Now you can see that deck curve didn't come in and I did that on purpose just to show that you have to have these section sizes loaded into Revit before you do this. So I already had all the beams and all the column EA's uh, angles loaded into Revit before. So to do that for this deck I've just got to load, go to insert, load family and you will have your library in Revit. Um, I've got Australia here so you'll select your country. It's either going to be columns, so under columns for vertical members or structural framing for everything else. Um, it's a bit of a quirk of Revit that columns is stuck is under columns. Um, sometimes you bring things in and you're like why hasn't that come in? It's because it's under columns rather than frame um, 
the normal framing which has everything else. So structural framing, steel, I'm using Australian standard here and I need a UC sections. So I'm just going to open that and I'm just going to select them all. It'll give me a warning but I don't care. Just saying you're loading too much into the file but it's not really that much so yes. And I'll also add the WCs, which in Australia is just the bigger, the welded columns. Okay, so if we go back to our script, I just enabled and re-enabled it and it's come up now. So that's brought the section sizes in and so now you can see I can change this parametrically and it just updates in Revit. It's a little bit slow <clears throat> but it gets the job done. Just bear in mind that Rhino inside Revit is still a work in progress, so every now and again you'll get something a bit strange happen, but generally it's, you don't have too many problems. And obviously I can still control my properties, so I can make it center or I can rotate 45 or 90 degrees and it will update that in Revit as well. So you can see this is a pretty quick way of getting weird geometry into Revit because doing this in Revit itself, especially if it's in 3D or it's an organic shape, it's pretty difficult to model in Revit but this makes it really easy. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.